Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kurt. Welcome back to Farlands or Bust. I hear footsteps. Very suspicious footsteps outside, but yeah, welcome back to Farlands or Bust. You hear that? Is that me? <laughs> ah, hopefully, hopefully. Okay, I think we're okay. Oh, unless it was a... no. It's the chicken! The chicken's feet upon the ice. The ice! The vanilla ice. But anyway, we're back and far lands are bust. This is episode 392 of Far Lands Are Bust. It is Friday, August 15th, 2014. And we are continuing west to the Far Lands in Minecraft Beta 1.7.3. As we have been doing for over three years now. Oh, and some pig. We need some pig for, for Wolfie. And a boosh. Get Wolfified. Receive a Wolfieing. And give us nothing to feed to Wolfie. Let's try this guy. Let's see if he's a little bit more charitable. No, he's not. Last try. Last chance. Are you generous? Generous Pig of... No, these these pigs are dry. You guys aren't dry. Ah, segue. Because you're still giving money to Child's Play Charity over at FarlandsBus.com. We are up to 8,790... Look at all the skeleton residue. 8,783, excuse me, $83 raised this season for Child's Play Charity at farlandsorbus.com. Like I said, I do appreciate the continued support. You're helping get toys, books, games to kids in hospitals around the world. Around the world. And that's what we've been supporting here for the past three years in Farlands or Bust. We have overall raised over $280,000 since the beginning. It's craziness. Craziness indeed, and I do appreciate it, and I'm sure everybody who has benefited from it also appreciates it as well. Indeed, as we continue on. I've been seeing a few questions in, in the comments of videos. Uh, the people asking them are probably not going to see this segment, but asking once again about why, why it's so shaky. Why is the world sh shaky? Indy, why does the floor move? What, you know, we're all shaky here as you see me walking around. These pigs! These pigs are dry. And that is simply due to the fact that we are so far from spawn. From the zero, zero point on the map. It has to do with the mathematics that, uh, that position the player on the map. And as you get further, as I said, from zero, zero, that number gets bigger and bigger. The decimal point, the floating point moves over and over and and it just is less accurate to your position on the map so it's normally not too visible there we go it's normally not too visible when we're walking on a a straight west axis here or even if we walk on a uh north or south axis well actually it is actually i take that back if you're going west or east it's fine but the north or south and also on a, on a slight angle like this, you can really see it, because this is the axis in which the number has been rising well over 1,400,000 blocks. Uh, what, what was the last number? 1,479,940? Yeah, 1.4 million blocks from spawn. The Far Lands, the Far Lands are 12 and a half million blocks from spawn, so we're right around that 12, 13-ish percent of the way there after three years. I don't do this every day, and we only do 35-minute episodes at a time, so it's not necessarily a sprint, but it is a journey, an adventure. An adventure and a journey to discover ourselves. <laughs> ah, cheesy. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, we're continuing on here. So yeah, that's why the world shakes. It's not lag, it's not... N nothing is wrong with your monitor. No need to adjust your sets. It is simply the way the game works. The way it works. And that's the way it was. Uh, so yeah. I do appreciate everybody who 
you know, finds out about the series and comes and, and watches for the first time, and perhaps that's the most frequent question, but that that's why it jitters. That there is why it jitters. There's other other frequently asked questions can be can be answered at the farlandsbusts.com website. <coughs> Ow! At the about page, there's kind of a question and answer thing there, perhaps. I don't know, do I have any verbiage in there about the, the jitteriness? Maybe I'll have to add that one as well, but there's stuff about how long we've been doing this, where are the far lands, what happens, and uh, raising money for Child's Play charity, and, and even what are your computer specs, and, and all that stuff is all over there, so... Indeed! Indeed! It's Friday, that means I'm gonna have to get to a bunch of questions here from donors, but I wanted to also mention some very interesting... Space News, Space News, Solar System, Universal Studios, no, what, <laughs> uh, we have a, a very interesting event coming up in October, not around Earth, but around Mars, Comet Sighting Spring, better known as the designation C slash 2013 A1, is actually going to pass by Mars extremely close extremely close. I might be incorrect in saying this, but I believe it is the closest planetary encounter of a comet that has not been an impact. We did see Comet Shoemaker-Levy actually impact Jupiter, but this is probably, I think, going to be the closest encounter of a comet to a planet without an impact ever to be observed, most certainly by, by modern science in, in that regard. So this is very cool. Yeah, Comet Sighting Spring is going to approach, make its closest approach to Mars on October 19th of this year. It's going to pass within 134,000 kilometers. That's a pretty big distance as far as human scale is concerned, but careful Wolfie. What the heck did you hurt yourself on? Uh... You know, that that seems like a pretty big number, but just to put some perspective on it, the distance from the Earth, our, you know, we, us, to our moon, is 384,000 kilometers. So, like a third of the distance, like if this comet was coming towards Earth, or going to encounter Earth, it would be a third of the distance to the moon. That is an extremely close shave. At first, when it was first discovered, they... There were some odds as to whether or not it would actually impact Mars, but all of those odds, all the calculations have been made now that we know how big, uh, it's about, what is it? Isn't it like uh, half a mile, half a mile uh, wide about the, the, the nucleus of the comet? Uh, now that we know its mass and its size, uh, it's all all been ruled out. There's no uh, there's no chance for the comet to be impacting Mars itself. But of course, with a comet comes the debris, the the cloud, the the outside of the nucleus. The you know it, it expels the the ice and water and debris that makes the the comet tail that we all associate with with comets. And and that stuff is definitely going to be going into Mars. And there's going to be one heck of a meteor shower on Mars. I'm not going to use a bed as a boat, that would be ill-advised. <laughs> Let's actually make a boat to use as a boat. Bleep bloop. Yeah, we can use that before the sun sets. Uh, but yeah, the, the debris and whatnot is actually going to cause quite a, a, a spectacle, if you will. But also, it, it might... The thing we're worried about is it might harm some of our robotic satellites that orbit Mars. We have, I think, currently three. Uh, two are actually en route to orbit Mars uh, later this year. But yeah, we have the MRO, Mars Reconnaissance Observatory, Mars Express, Mars Odyssey, are all orbiting Mars, and they're actually undergoing maneuvers to put them in the most safe position when the comet passes by and when that debris field is going to be most possible to, you know, the debris is little grains of sand or smaller is what the debris is made of, but coming at that velocity relative to the spacecraft could cause some serious problems. So they're, they're actually doing some maneuvers. There's no, uh, they've pretty much also ruled out any chance that the comet itself would impact any or, or harm any of the, the satellites. Uh, but the debris is what they're concerned about. The, the Mars rovers are all safe. They are actually going to attempt to observe 
the comet with the Mars rovers, uh, but it, it's actually going to appear as, from the surface of Mars, it's going to appear, now I need the bed, it's going to appear as magnitude negative six, which is very bright. Uh, Venus from Earth is, is generally like magnitude negative three, negative four, so that's very bright for such a close pass to Mars, so they're going to try to observe with uh, opportunity and curiosity, but of course their cameras aren't really optimized for viewing things in the sky, they're obviously better optimized for viewing things on the ground and the terrain and rocks and, and objects and things like that. Uh, so they're going to try that, but they're also these satellites orbiting Mars are going to be pointed to observe the comet and try to look at its nucleus and, and the properties to kind of see what happens with a cometary encounter of this nature. Let's go to sleep! And a cometary encounterness. Boop. So yeah, that's very cool. Uh, probably a, a once in a lifetime thing there. Obviously, well, I wonder. Now I do wonder if it. Well, I guess I should check. Is Mars even go? Oh, oh God! Good gravy. Uh, Wolfie, don't go down that that area. Yes, well done. Good job uh, avoiding avoiding certain doom. <laughs> Yikes, that was scary. Uh, I don't know if Mars is going to be visible at that time for us on Earth. Yeah, I wonder if it would be possible to like point your telescope at Mars and then also see the comet. At that distance from the sun, it might not be bright enough to view from Earth, like the, the, the coma, I believe it's called, the corona, not the corona. Is it the corona? Or the coma? I think it's the coma. That's the name of the, the tail and the, the, the outgassing of, of debris is called the coma, I believe. Yeah, I don't believe that's probably not going to be bright enough. It might be. Who knows? And I'm sure maybe, maybe they'll point Hubble or whatever at it, or, or ground-based telescopes here on Earth, ooh, to, uh, to try to observe. You know, that'd be very cool to get both, both Mars and, like, a comet right next to it in the, in the, in the field of view. Speaking of field of views, Picture time! Picture time! <laughs> uh, this is very cool. So yeah, that's, that's cool stuff. Cool stuff indeed. This year and next year are turning out to be very interesting years for planetary science. But enough about the cosmos. Let's talk about me. <laughs> Let's answer some questions from donors to Child's Play Charity when you donate to Child's Play Charity at farlinesofbus.com through the official Child's Play Charity.com, or I'm sorry, Child's Play Charity.org donation widget. Oh, this is a bad, oh, whoa, bad idea. You should not be traversing the treetops, Kurt. This is, this is most subprime. Oh, or not, that worked out all right. I am Tarzan. I'm not gonna do the Tarzan yell, just letting you know. But, uh, but yeah, we have some questions when you, when you donate through the official Child's Play Charity widget, you get a little comment field. If you do put something in that comment field, I will see that, and you can ask a question, and I will hopefully answer them in a future episode of Far Lines of Bust. Have a, have a list here working on, whittling down the list of questions. This one from Burgasms. We all know Burgasms. He he's uh, friends with Far Lands Bust and also uh, frequents Lorgon 111's uh, videos, I believe. And, and has I think he helped him with Minecraft Bingo. Did he not a little bit? I'm not sure. Uh, he's also on the Reddit and in comments and has has donated many many times to Child's Play charity through Far Lands Bust. So Burgasms has another question here. What are your thoughts on extending? Human lifespans. Am I going the right way? Yeah, I should keep the compass out. What are your thoughts on extending human lifespans? The good, the bad, about the social, the social impact of this? I haven't. That's that's a that's a a a, a branch of science and, and medical science that I'm not really. I haven't been following to a great extent, uh, and it's uh, it's interesting. And, you know, the thing I, I look at it and the way I understand it is, is... Wolfie? Oh, there you are. Are you... Yeah, your tail's a little bit down. Speaking of extending lifespans, let's extend Wolfie's lifespan by giving him a treat. Bloop! 
And, uh, yeah, the thing I understand of it, and the way I personally look at it from a, from a non, from a layman's point of view, I suppose I could say, is whenever somebody passes away or dies, it's never due to natural causes. Natural causes is not a, 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 a cause of death ever in the medical examiner's field. Uh, it's always due to failure of something, heart failure, uh, you know, uh, some some other sort of failure. It, it's generally, you know, heart failure is the number. Heart failure, cardiac arrest is, is always the. I think it's the number one cause of quote unquote natural death. You know, it's it's basically because of that. So if we could, you know, say okay, say we find a way to cure heart failure or maybe heart transplants or you know some way to stop the elderly or it's normally you know you'd, you'd look at oh he died of old age well no he died of this uh you know at some point your heart it's the wasn't it a uh i think neil armstrong it's a neil armstrong quote where he says that he believes that every human has a finite number of of, of heartbeats in them and he intends not to waste any of his or, or something like that was the quote went along those lines uh so yeah let's say certain heart has, you know, like a, like a car has a 100,000 mile warranty. The heart has, uh, you know, 27 million pumps in it uh, and uh, or heartbeats in it and, and once once that uh, once that number runs out it just is like Ugh. so yeah, if we could say cure that, uh, obviously as, as time has progressed and, and lifespans have extended, we've found that our, our bodies, our human bodies, run into other issues, mental issues, the, you know, degenerative diseases of, of the brain, uh, Alzheimer's and whatnot, and dementia. What if we are to, to solve those issues? Perhaps it might be a simple genetic or chemical uh, issue that can be solved there. So yeah, all of these things could theoretically, with medical or even technological advances, extend human life further and further and uh, the, I don't know if immortality is the word to put towards it or if that's a possibility or even anything anybody actually would even want uh, but uh, it's uh, an interesting an interesting field and an interesting uh, I'm sure there's a lot of philosophical uh, like Bergasm says social impacts obviously if everybody started living to 200 years, we would have a serious overpopulation problem. More so serious than it already is in certain parts of the world and just globally in general as far as resources versus people versus poverty versus those, you know, like us in America, we use 30% of whatever the, the world resources is and, you know, 800 or 12, 1200% more on a daily basis than we do people in other parts of the world and it's uh, you know you look at that sort of thing uh, it's it's uh it's a problem it, it would be a problem even more so if you know and obviously you would have to assume that that the the privileged the privileged of the world would be the first to take advantage of having these ridiculously extended lifespans therefore their consumption would go up even higher leaving less for those people who who aren't able to take advantage of longer lifespans so it, it would further bridge widen the gap i suppose you could say and uh, yeah there's a lot of implications there i'm certainly not against the researching of and uh you know preventing diseases preventing these the these things that uh that take people from us too soon i suppose you could say and uh it's an interesting field an interesting feel indeed. I don't believe, you know, if somebody asked, would you like to be immortal? I'm like, meh, probably not. There, there's also, I did some research for an art project into the, the cryogenics. That's not necessarily extending lifespans because the way that theoretically, theoretically works is you kind of die for a while, but then you come back is the way that would sort of work. So I don't know if that is actually the the default definition of extending human lifespans perhaps extending human existence of a particular human maybe uh, but that's almost time travel like that if that was a solid and a hundred percent guaranteed thing 
well, I might consider that. And and of course, the the other argument for for cryogenics. Uh, I'm speaking of people who go say they have you know the main use of it or the main selling point for for cryogenics now is oh if you have some sort of terminal illness or or problem and and you die we will preserve your body and then you will be thawed out and brought back to life whenever that particular problem that you died of is solved uh, you know whenever that disease or or cause of death is solved and they could reverse that they could bring you back in the year 3000 or 2200 or whatever whatever it may be uh, that that's kind of the going uh concept with that i wouldn't you know right now the simple cryogenics methods i don't think are, are up to par you know the, the people say a 300 years from now if if the if the, if the cryogenically frozen people right now still exist they're probably going to look back and be like no I can't save this person because uh, in the year 2000 the people who cryogenically froze this person did a terrible job and there's no saving them so uh, you know there's there's multiple angles to look at that like I said I did a little bit of research and there are companies who do that uh, and there's there's of course controversy surrounding them and uh, and whatnot, and you know, there are people who are completely buy into that 100%, and they, they they pay a lot of money to be cryogenically frozen, without any sort of guarantee on the other side. But uh, but yeah, very interesting. It's an interesting topic, but one that I honestly, uh, other things like like space and comets and things, other things, uh, tend to take my attention. Uh, to a much greater extent than that, but a, a very interesting topic indeed anyway. Uh, let's go to sleep for just a night, not like 200 years, cryogenically. But let's go to sleep and continue on in the morning. <laughs> and awakeness. That was a neat little area we kind of missed right there. Spoiters, creepers, there must have been... Bah, I'm not gonna walk back there. There must have been like a zombie or skeleton spawner back there. So we heard we heard some commotion. Commotion beneath our feet. Let's see here. Another question. We've got some I try to organize these like I have a chunk of like questions re regarding revolving around YouTube and, and my stuff personally. I've got some like space questions and uh, blah 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 blah. I try to Try to group them together, so these questions I don't necessarily answer in chronological order of which I receive them, so it's possible you've asked a question with your donation two months ago, and it's still in my list here, but I just simply haven't found a, a context to answer it in. Uh, so let's answer a question here from Jaws or Jaws. Have you ever considered hiring an editor or channel manager to help manage the Kurt J. Mac channel operations? Uh, not at all, really, simply because I would not... We kind of talked about this last time, about uh, being properly paid for your services and, and finding a job and being employed. Uh, I would not be able to properly employ somebody at the, at the, at the minimum wage rate. Uh, nor would I I want I wouldn't want to hire somebody for free uh, you know as like a, like I was saying an unpaid intern I always want to try to reimburse people or you know people who do the artwork for for t-shirts and, and stuff on uh, on my store I always give you know commission and, and whatnot so uh, yeah I don't <laughs> I, I'm I'm making enough for myself and uh, Working with that and going forward is is really my only concern right now. And I've mentioned this many times before. People say, "Oh, you should set up a, a forums on your website," or "Oh, you should set up a, a fan site or or a, uh, a fan server uh, or, or this, that, or the other." Uh, oh, and just have somebody else, you know, cover it or, or be the administrator of that or, or be the be the uh, you know moderator of this, that, or the other. And I'm like, ah. Uh, I kind of, I, I, I personally, I'm a little bit stubborn. Is that a pink sheep? No, it's a white sheep. Never mind. You are worthless to me, sir, or madam, or sheep. Uh, we, uh, yeah, I don't. I'm. I, it's, it's a stubbornness in me that I personally like to have control over the aspects of of my work here. It's probably one of the reasons I didn't like being employed. 
by somebody because I'm not necessarily in control of my projects or the work I'm doing or the final or the, you know, the the way it progresses. You know, I'm doing work for somebody else. I have to follow their instructions versus my own. Uh, I don't know. It's not like I was ever grossly insubordinate in <laughs> being like, no, I'm not going to do it that way, boss or, or client. Uh, but I like to have, as far as Far Lands Bust and my channel is concerned, I like to be the one who, who has control of the... The I, you know, even even to the point where I, I design my own logo and uh, channel and my, my website I design myself, which is why it often gets so wildly out of date because I, I, I spend time making videos and doing the actual work that counts versus the, the side stuff, but I don't want to outsource that because of that. So, so yeah, there's a little bit of stubborn... Stubbornness, control, freakishness. What? Is that a word? That's a word. Now it's a word. Declared. Ooh, that might have been loud. Apologies. Don't bang on the desk while recording. So, so yeah, there's part of that, but also to the part that I wouldn't be able to hire anybody or pay anybody. I, you know, I might. I don't know. I'll have to see with certain things like fulfilling the 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 patron uh, rewards is going to be a little bit of a, a problem. Uh, you know, I, I, I could see needing to, to hire somebody to do my taxes. That hasn't happened yet. Uh, but I, I do like to have the control. And, and it's not only about control, but it's about knowing what's going on. Say, like with my taxes, I like knowing that, oh, okay, I can take this, this standard uh, home office deduction because this, that, or the other, instead of just handing over all my papers to somebody else and trusting them and then being completely not knowledgeable about the, the goings-ons behind it. So it's a little bit about knowledge, but also a little bit about controlling and, and being able to be on top of everything in regard to how I do work. So I don't know, maybe I don't, you know, even... Uh, I don't know what the threshold would be, but I'm sure there is some threshold of a channel size where you have to think, okay, uh, this, that, or the other. I don't I don't at all ever anticipate getting getting that large where I'm going to need to, like... This is Kurt J. Mack, LLC, OPP, uh, you know me. Uh, uh, no, the, uh, you know, I, I don't ever foresee I wouldn't mind, but then again, I do also like being small enough to have control over everything and also being like, oh, I, I'm going to start a podcast. Okay, let's let's start a separate uh, vlog channel. Let's, let's do this, that, or the other. Let's play this game. That, you know, I do like having... The, it's the it's the attraction of the the indie the indie kind of title the indie self-employed way to go um, so so yeah that I guess kind of answers that question indeed <laughs> uh, let's see from oh there, there's a ganat there's a ganat in my room the ganat uh, from brainy pole. Any thoughts on a Chicago fan meetup, or are conventions enough for you? Um, I've thought of it. There are a lot, a lot of, you know, it's not, I don't know that it's at the point where I can just say, oh, hey, everybody, I'm at Grant Park by the Bean. Uh, let's let's come, come down and meet here at, at 2 p.m. Or, or whatever. Uh, I feel like uh, that could cause problems, and we've certainly seen in the past with other casual, what were supposed to be casual meetups from other YouTubers, how they've run into some issues. And we know from the last Minecon, we had to actually go through and actually make an official event, rent out a place, have insurance and security and stuff uh, worked out ahead of time. I'm not saying that I can't be seen in public and it's like, I have to hide in, under a hoodie, you know, I'm not saying that to that degree. Uh, but maybe, maybe, if, you know, that that might be a possibility. I know Beef is attempting to plan something for a meetup for his million subscriber thingamajig. I suppose I should observe how that goes, and if I am ever to try to do something like that, I'll have to, I'll have to refer to his than what would be expertise on the subject. Uh, but yeah, the conventions make for an already... You know, it, it's already a venue, it's already a place, it's already somewhere that 
people of like minds are going to be. It's already got all of that infrastructure in place. You know, like the at PAX in Seattle last year, the way we did the outside of PAX meetup, we found a public space near the convention that we could say, yes, we are going to be here at this time, between these times. If you are in the area, say you don't have a badge to see us at PAX, this is where we're going to be. Stop by. We'll, we'll do this, that, or the other. That, that worked out. That worked out. I'm not sure if that sort of thing would work out again in the future. I'm not sure. Uh, just judging on, on the, the size of the way the, the Minecon thing went, uh, you know, there, you know, you could run into problems with, with the, the, the police officers and public safety if, if suddenly there's a gathering of 50 or 100 people in a space, it uh, might, might draw some unwanted attention. So I'm always nervous about that sort of thing, but maybe, maybe, uh, you know, I, I would definitely let you know if I ever come up with that sort of idea. Uh, but yeah, conventions right now are kind of the, 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 the safe place to hold those sorts of things as opposed to just on your own in, in public randomly. Uh, but thanks for that question. Brainy Pole, oh, I almost, I almost sheared Wolfie. I wish to shear this guy. Yoink. Don't complain. Now you're cool off. You're not wearing your coat. Even though you are kind of near the snow biome, but <laughs> you're, you're warm-blooded. Deal with it. Um, yeah, I think I'll, I'll get get those are the those are the questions I can answer right there. I mean, there's some other ones that are yeah, the sun setting. The sun setting on this Friday episode of Farlands or Bust. Let's do a little bit of hunting here. Yes! Good job, Wolfie. Well done. Congratulations. Woof. Woof to you too. And then I guess we're gonna hang out in the snow biome here for the weekend. Woof. Like I said, I do appreciate the continued support for Child's Play Charity at farlandsorbust.com. Go! Dang it, we just got food and then you... You go and do that. You go and do that. Let's... let's do something crazy. I'm crazy. Have a seat. Beep. Bop. I've got a, a porch. Let's get rid of this. Make it a little bit... a little bit more dramatic. There we go. We have a, an underground elevated hidey hole is what this is going to be. <laughs> got steps up to it. Oh man, that was actually when I was playing Minecraft for the first... Is this the right...? Yeah, that one is. For the first time, I would build my houses, like, up on stilts, and then have, like, stairs much higher than this to protect myself from the zombies, because the zombies in this version and uh, up until recent versions didn't have the pathfinding, so they would just kind of congregate around the sides here and you can kind of beat them up that way. Uh, so this is this what's <laughs> I, I'm reminded of that because of this Yeah, so probably here we don't even need Don't even need to, to fill that in we can have a window a window to the west To the west of the world <laughs> get it rest west I uh, accent anyway Let's make some beds for right now and for the next episode If you could I do appreciate if you want to follow along, your subscriptions here on YouTube, it's free. Your uh, your likes, likes always help. I can never, never understress the importance of how likes actually do impact the the success and spread of of a channel and uh, and content and and videos on YouTube. Uh, to to a fault, actually, they 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 matter more than most people think. But I, I appreciate that also. And, and simply following along for the ride here and uh, and all your support wherever you may be. Thank you so much for watching, Ooh, creepers. My name is Kurt. I will see you next time. <sighs>
Oh, oh God. Good gravy. 